Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The question that many people ask us is why did the third caliph uh, of, of Islam, uh, Uthman, why did he burn all of the Qurans uh, of his reign and his empire? And this is viewed as being something sacrilegious, something that shows that there were uh, Qurans that were somehow wrong. Uh, you know, this is a, a cultural misunderstanding because from the Islamic tradition, when you burn the Quran, you're not disrespecting it. In fact, this is the way to respectfully dispose of it. It's the exact opposite from the Western tradition. Our religion teaches us that when you have a copy of the Quran that is now used too much, it's worn, it's torn, you have to dispose of it. You don't just throw it in the trash. That's disrespectful. You disintegrate it. They didn't have, uh, they didn't have paper shredders back then. So how would they disintegrate the Quran? Well, they would simply light a fire to it and burn it because they didn't want people trampling on it. They didn't want people throwing it in the trash. They wanted to get rid of the sacredness of the Quran in a manner that is not intentionally disrespectful. And this is a cultural difference. When, when, when uh, Western traditions hear of burning books, they think of sacrilege, they think of angry mobs chanting. But the burning of the Quran is not done in that type of philosophy or mindset. The burning of the Quran was done to respectfully dispose of unofficial recensions of the Quran. In fact, what happened was, after the death of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, the Quran was compiled within two years after his death. Uh, and so the official compilation took place when every single one of the major companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, were still alive. But this official recension of the Quran was not made obligatory upon the entire caliphate, upon the entire uh, Islamic nation. And people would simply uh, copy with their own hands any copy that they had. And obviously, human errors occurred. Obviously, when you have six, seven, eighth generation, generation copies, anybody at home who knows how to read and write just copying the Quran, obviously errors are going to creep in and there's no question that there were variances, spelling mistakes. Uh, another problem that occurred at the time was that the script of the Arabic language had not yet been fully developed and so uh, one letter or one symbol could represent multiple letters. Yet another problem is that many of the people could not read and write proficiently. Yet another problem was that spelling had not yet been standardized. Even us here in America, if we read a book written 300 years ago, 200 years ago, we're going to find spelling differences. So you can imagine in a society that's very uh, Bedouin in nature, very illiterate by and large, the religion is coming in, educating the people, you're going to get a lot of variations that people began noticing. This is just not right. But we have an official Quran. We have the official recension that was done uh, by the first caliph. So the third caliph, Uthman, made a very simple decree. And he said, look, Anybody who wants a copy of the Quran has to copy it directly from the master copy. And to facilitate this, Uthman made a number of master copies from the original one. And he sent one uh, master copy to every major city in the Islamic province. And, he's, and this master copy was kept in the grand mosque of the city. And from then on, anybody who wanted a Quran was free to go to the master copy and copy it directly from the original copy that was in the, uh, that was in the main mosque of the city. Therefore, when this was done, Uthman then said, anybody who has a private collection, anybody who has his own handwritten Quran that's 7th, 8th, ninth generation away, you need to dispose of it. And how is it disposed of? The way that you dispose of Qurans is you burn them. And so everybody, there was no hue and cry, there was no, everybody voluntarily agreed, this is a great idea. Why shouldn't we go directly to the source? Why shouldn't we go directly to the official Quran? And so everybody agreed and therefore the people's Qurans were compiled by the authorities. They didn't go house to house searching for them. They didn't go confiscating. It was a voluntary move and everybody agreed because it makes sense. Everybody understood the problem that you're going to get scribal errors, you're going to get uh, punctuation marks, you're going to get all of these problems unless you go directly to the original. So the Caliph Uthman standardized the copies of the Quran and therefore from his time up until our time there has never been two copies of the Quran that are different even in one letter or one word and this is because of the far-sightedness of the Caliph Uthman and it's something that we're forever grateful for and really Muslims are very humble and very proud and very uh, grateful to God that they're the only religious group that can with so, so much authority say that their scriptures really have been preserved authentically as their Prophet intended them to be in the language of their Prophets. Hardly any other religion can say this. Even Judaism and Christianity, they're not really preserved in the language of their Prophets. Uh, within a few years after the death of, of, uh, of the Prophets, the Quran is the most 
protected of all scriptures. And in fact, we as Muslims believe that God in his divine wisdom and plan has protected the Quran from any type of alteration, from any type of deviation, from any type of, of, uh, uh, of, uh, mis of miswriting, because the Quran tells us that God has revealed this Quran and he is going to protect it. And we believe that the Caliph Uthman's actions were actions that are very logical, very reasonable, and they ensured the protection of the actual script of the Quran.